I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to find out a little bit more about the router section of Logic's ES2 synthesizer. The ES2 is a subtractive synthesizer, and in a way, it's Logic's most powerful subtractive synthesizer. And what a lot of people tend to find is that they sort of understand the idea that it's got an oscillator, a filter, and an amplifier section, but exactly how we can begin to shape those using some of the extended parameters at the bottom of the screen isn't quite so clear. So what we're going to do in this video is to find out exactly how the router allows that to happen. Now, by default, when we first open up the ES2, it's going to play its default noise. I'm not interested in that sound. What I want to do is to start with a pretty empty patch, something where I get to sort of choose the sound and design it for myself. And actually, there is a whole range of those. If I click on the factory um, default option up here, there are a whole series of tutorial setting sounds. And these are designed to just let you sort of begin to understand the kinds of sounds which the S2 is uh, capable of. And actually within Logic's online manual, you'll find that all of these relate to specific ways of building sound. So if you're interested in sound design using subtractive synthesizers, that's actually a really good resource. I'm going to select the Analog Saw 3 oscillator patch. And this sort of simplifies the display down to something much more manageable which allows us to see exactly what's happening. So straight away, what we can see is that the three separate oscillators here are all playing uh, what are called sawtooth waveforms. We can see that the uh, filter is wide open, which means we're going to get a very bright version of this sound. And we can see that the amplifier is set to give us uh, some nice volume. So we should just get a fairly basic synth patch here. OK. So far, so straightforward. Now, what if I wanted to get this sound moving? What often happens when we're working with subtractive synthesizers is we want to be in a position to sort of shape the behavior of the sound over time. And we can do that with two separate modules, the low frequency oscillators, and the ES2 features two of those, and the envelope, uh, or the envelope section, and the ES2 has got three of those. So let's deal with the easiest one of those first. Envelope 3, down here in the bottom right hand corner, is automatically routed through to volume. You can see that's kind of printed here on the interface. So in other words, this envelope is going to control the way that the sound behaves over time. So if I increase the attack time, which I can do here, and slightly increase the release time, we'll hear um, a slightly softer start and a slightly softer, more sort of fading out end to uh, these uh, synth notes. OK, we're going to hear that clearly. Let's go back to something a little bit more direct for now. What I'm particularly interested to do is to not work with the automatic routings within the S2, like uh, the Envelope 3 being sort of plugged into the volume, but instead to start thinking about other ways in which I might choose to interrupt the behavior of this um, synthesizer. And that brings the router into play. What we've basically got are all of these separate targets through the middle of the interface here. And what these allow me to do is to pick a parameter which I want to manipulate, to choose a source, in other words, a manipulator for that particular um, parameter, and then the amount that I want that source to affect the target. So let's take an example. What happens, for instance, if I was to say, right, I want to take the pitch of all three of these oscillators, pitch one, two, and three, and set that as a target. Well, I've done that in the first available slot here. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to route through um, a different target or a different source to change the way that that behaves. So what I'm actually going to do here is to choose envelope number one. Now envelope one is down here um, right in the middle of the bottom of the interface. And what this is going to do is to say, OK, I'm going to um, bring an attack time and a decay time to pitch because I've selected that as my target. So having done that, you'd expect that we'd be able to hear that straight away. So why isn't that working yet? Well, the reason for that is we haven't yet introduced the way in which we want or the amount of that that we want to hear. This little green triangle on the right hand side allows me to set the amount that envelope one is going to affect the pitch of oscillators one, two and three. Let's try that now. OK, now we are hearing that pitch change because we're beginning to bring the parameters of envelope one to bear on these three um, oscillators. OK, so let's see whether or not we can make that a little bit more interesting. I'm going to increase the attack time and increase the decay time as well. <laughs> 
So what we now get is this pitch rise and fall before it then settles onto the notes that I played. Now, most of the time, that's not going to be particularly useful. You're not going to want a synth pad that does this. <laughs> It sounds a bit Looney Tunes to me. But what we could do would be to just bring that down a little bit and the decay time as well and just give ourselves a little bit of pitch modulation right on the beginning of each chord. And that's a little bit more interesting. We've just got this little bit of bite now on the front of each note. OK, well, that works all right. But what if instead what we wanted to do is to say, right, well, rather than that being pitch, what might happen if we decided that the thing we wanted to manipulate was the filter, the tone of the sound? Well, we could keep these two parameters more or less where they are. I might just slightly increase them both. And what I'm then going to do is to swap the target here, this time selecting cut off one and two. Now, the ES2 has two separate filters. We're not going to worry about those for now, but by selecting cut off one and two, I'm basically saying, OK, I want both of those filters to behave or be manipulated in the same way. So this time, what we should find is that the envelope is going to control the cutoff frequency of both of these filters. At the moment, actually, we're only going to be hearing this one because the blend dial is pushed all the way across to filter number two. So let's set the cutoff point here somewhere in the middle and just begin to see what happens when envelope one begins to in, sort of inflict itself and the attack and decay phase um, of those two parameters inflict themselves on this cutoff frequency. OK, let's make those much shorter so we get a much more rapid decay time. OK, so you can begin to hear now that the tone is changing. So what the router allows us to do is, as I say, to choose uh, targets and sources. Now, let's just choose a really interesting one and see what happens when we do this. I'm going to take this routing off altogether. And the way that I can do that is to press Control and simply select Off here, and that routing will disappear. And you can see that there are a couple here by default, which I'm also just going to throw away. So we really are back to the most basic version of this sound. Sounds like this. Let's open up the filter. OK. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to choose the pitch of all three oscillators again. But this time what I'm going to do is to choose LFO2 as my source. So this time a low frequency oscillator is going to interrupt the pitch. OK, so where is LFO2? Well, it's down here. LFO2 is right here. And what I have a chance to do firstly is to choose the waveform that I want to use to control it. So I can choose one of these shapes simply by clicking on them. And then what I can do is to choose the speed at which this is going to happen. So in other words, the faster I go, the more rapid this will obviously become and I can slow it down as well. So what I've done is I've chosen LFO um, 2 and the pitch of all three oscillators. So now what we should hear is undulations in the pitch of this note. <laughs> And sure enough, that's working just fine. What happens if I was to choose, let's say, a random square wave? OK, so rather than just regular undulations, rather than just a sound that's rising and falling in a really predictable way, instead what we can do is to choose a square wave, which is a much more notched shape, but it's got a random output. So rather than a, a sort of square shape, which is predictable, it's going to dance around and do all sorts of crazy things. And what's really interesting about the way that LFO2 works in the ES2 is that actually we can synchronize its speed to tempo. So in other words, if I was to select a 16th note here, what that means is that we'll get a new little pitch offset every 16th note within uh, each note as I play it. And if I was to change the tempo of my project down to, let's say, 90 beats per minute, we'll hear that slow down. OK, so that's still quite crazy and a bit random. But what if we were then to say, OK, well, I'll tell you what, I'll swap pitch for cutoff frequency. So again, let's come back to the filters, select cutoff one and two, set this somewhere in the middle. 
so that we've got a chance for the sound to be brighter and duller than its current position. And again, use LFO2, turn up the amount of rooting here on the right hand side, and now we're going to get a fixed pitch, but the tone is going to be changing every 16th note. And of course, what I can do at any stage is say, actually, I quite like that. What I'm going to do is just maybe run this through, I don't know, an effect. Let's put some delay on it and see what that sounds like. Again, if we keep this sort of clocked to the tempo of our piece, we should find that this actually adds something quite interesting to this, to this sound. <laughs> Okay, so what we've begun to do within this video is to begin to explore the router within the ES2. This is the area where we can take different sources, whether they're the LFOs or the envelopes, and patch those in, plug them in, almost like a modular synthesizer, to interrupt the oscillator, the filter, and the amplifier section. And what you'll find when you start diving in here is that there is an enormous array of targets and sources that you can use to manipulate the sounds that you make within the ES2, including some unpredictable things that are actually really musical. <laughs> 